Good day, comrades. Commissar Bro here, taking a look at Superpower 2. This game is amazing. I don't know. You, I, I, a lot. I guess a lot of people haven't played it, but it was recently re-released on Steam, and in my excitement. I just had to pick me up a copy because I mean come on when is taking a country and dominating the world with it not fun as hell exactly uh, let me explain real quick this is a geopolitical simulator where you simulate running a country from the military economic and political aspects um, the game, as you can see, is rendered on a very beautiful little globe here and features over 155 countries. Uh, to give you kind of an idea, you can play as any single one of these countries if you would like. And this was all the uh, countries officially recognized by the UN in 2001 which is when this game takes place as you can see from where I'm currently playing is 32 years in the future where I have basically established China as the foremost superpower in the world now I have not done this through warlike means I have actually just done it by economic pressure essentially and unfortunately, the U.S. is not my biggest fan, even though I would really like us to get along. But everybody relatively gets along with China, it seems, except for oh, India, I guess. India took over. India's been hella aggressive. I, I can't show you right now. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I have a cold, by the way. But look, you see those orange areas there? Those orange areas are actually um, the countries that India has conquered. It's the territories they've taken over since the start of the game. They have not annexed these regions yet for reasons I'm not 100% sure of. But they've been a very, very aggressive little puppy. And as you can see, so has the U.S. For some reason, Great Britain and the U.S. went and took over poor little Saudi Arabia. I'm not quite sure what Saudi Arabia did, but that is what they did. So anyway, let's focus on my internal affairs. I currently have about a trillion dollar debt, which I'm paying off rather quickly. Um, as far as my budget goes, I'm relatively spending as much as I want to spend on improving healthcare and education and telecom and government, so on and so forth. Now, each one of these has some sort of benefit that um, assists in your government. If I increase the government tab here all the way, it will slowly get rid of any corruption that is in your country. Now, 30 years ago, my little Chinese um, nation here was far more, how do you say, corrupt? Like, really corrupt? So I fixed that over time. And we've made great strides. We have made great, great strides. The Our military is still not more powerful than the United States, but that is something I am working on. Because I'm not going to lie, the main thing that is fun in this game is, you know, going to war with people, taking over other countries, so on and so forth. This little tab I'm looking at right now, I'm actually buying uh, weapons of war. My tab here, because we can actually make our own weapons. And after you've researched so many things, you can pretty much like build your own crap. So let's go to tanks, and I will make one. And you see here, they've got templates, just little basic templates that you can design your tank with. And here, I have made my own little Abrams-looking tank. Yeah. Check that shit out. Mm, fucking sexy. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. That knot on the end. Oh, that's sexy. Anyway, all right, so... Let's up the ante a bit. Now, as China, I have done my research. 
not a lot of research. There's still a couple things left to go, but basically, this tank, as it is, is probably the foremost powerful tank in the world. And what what are we gonna name it? How about the the Chinese Liberator? Yeah, because that's what we're gonna be doing. And let's make it black. Fuck yeah. All right. Anyway, that's the design tab, and you have a, a huge assortment of vehicles because again, you're controlling all aspects of the war. And then you have, um, you know, destroyers, frigates, aircraft carriers, so on, so forth. Aircraft carriers are the most expensive beast on the game. Like, they're just look at that. That that one is just gonna that one singular aircraft would cost me 72 billion dollars to make so we're gonna call this the wallet breaker alright so now that we have designed our own little weapons of war let us build them in the name of the commissar we're gonna be 50 Chinese liberators actually you know what put that up to three orders of 150 I don't like to wait long now let's go build the wallet breaker which again we have to be careful about because it's so expensive um, if I want five of them it's gonna cost me roughly four hundred billion dollars but that's okay China's economy can handle it because I've been preparing for this day and even if I couldn't handle it right this moment I could always dump down a few things but I do need my navy to be a little bit more powerful because it is just not powerful enough. Um, I accidentally moved. Somehow I moved him to that island. Did I just declare war on somebody? No, I didn't. Alright, well, anyway. Now, you have strategic forces and stuff like that. Like, I'm gonna go build me 50 more nuclear missiles. I'm pretty sure the world doesn't like that. But, who gives a shit? You can research missile defense in this game as well. The strategic warfare screen looks something like this. And committing the act is hilarious. Oh! Oh! There's something going on in South Korea. Oh! They went to war! Oh! Mm, who should I join? Oh! I am so sorry, North Korea. There is nothing I can do to help your ass. But I can join the side of my buddies here the Americans yes let's steamroll over the porter expand our influence spread the red dragon spread it take this time we're, 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 we're spreading it you wait then it's just a little battle screen ignore that and there was much of a battle there to be had Yes, yes, we are taking advantage of political fervor to, to swipe it out from under our enemies. That's how you do it, man. Oh, here's a bigger battle. Holy crap! Let me take that back. They just shot down like 500 of my aircraft. It's time to deploy the troops. Deploy. Deploy. Where's my capital? There's my capital. Alright, let's send in some reinforcements. Oh, for fuck's sake. Come on now. You know what I want. Alright. So, China has effectively won out in this war. That's right. I pretty much got that whole area. They're still fighting them, though, in the sea. Hmm. Well, anyway. So, now that I have taken over this paltry little country, I actually have the option to annex it. Now, it takes six months to do that, and it kind of pisses off a lot of countries. See? I've pissed off... You can kind of tell because this, the thematic map I have it on right now is Diplomatic Relations. And you can kind of see 
you know, red, darker colors, blah, 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 blah. Apparently, Libya really didn't like that. But do I give a shit? Not really. I'm China. This is my world. Welcome to it. I don't really know what that means. It's a big red square. But! I have faith. Yeah, that, that. Oh, god damn! I just realized that's a North Korean fleet. Ooh, let me get in there. What do I got? Well, I think this is as good as point as any to wrap it up for today. We're leaving it on a cliffhanger. The red dragon rises. Yes, yes, yes. And and hopefully, hopefully my my endeavors will continue. The war will expand and involve other countries. I think I'm going to focus on the Asian area, conquering, you know, establishing the Asian sphere of influence. Well, anyway, Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Commissar, the sick version. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this little look at Superpower 2.